try to watch it from this close, it's even better. We should get 3D at our church. Now, I am not a skier at all, and I am very risk-averse for the most part when it comes to especially throwing myself off a mountain. But when you watch a clip like that, it is hard not to get caught up in the vicarious thrill of that adventure. Threading through that crevice with those two rock faces on either side, or skiing along the top of that tree as a guy, knowing what could happen, <laughs> dropping off that cornice and doing all of those flips, absolutely amazing. What a buzz and a total endorphin rush, which is why they do it, I'm thinking, to feel that kind of alive, to experience what it's like, even for fleeting moments, to be totally attuned to what this human existence is all about, to be awake. Psychologist Mahali, here we go, Sikzent Mahali says, I tried that all week and did better than that. This psychologist guy says, this kind of activity combines both a heightened sense of arousal and engagement in one's surroundings, as well as intense, almost out-of-body concentration within an activity. Like I said, a huge rush. And I would argue, in this context of church and faith, that it is a rush that we are all meant for. We are meant to know and experience that kind of aliveness. To be a human being who is made in the image of God, the God who made all mountains and all snow and all beauty and all goodness, to be a human being who is made to know that God is to be a person who is wide awake and more in tune externally and internally and having more out-of-body experiences throughout life than anyone else. You were made, we are made to experience life in a vivid way, intensely, with that much joy and that much of a sense of excitement and being on the edge and being alive that much focus. Jesus said, I came so that you can have real and eternal life, real and eternal life, more and better life than you ever dreamed of. Flying a wingsuit is kind of just how you would imagine flying, you know, if, if, you, if you've ever dreamt about flying, you just kind of probably dream of just soaring around and, and you just kind of go wherever you look and you keep your arms out and just, just do it. Probably one of the most impressive things on the trip was just seeing Espen fly that close to the ground, buzzing the road. Dude, no kidding, eh? That is what he did, and he was a leader in leading a whole bunch of huge, extreme skiing, base jumping risk takers into. Shane McConkie was a sport innovator, and he explored new worlds in, with such a courage and a sense of having or an ability to, to step out, uh, none of, very few could follow him. He broke boundaries, was always on the leading edge, and sadly, it was this kind of activity, these kinds of activities, that ended up killing him last March in Italy 
in a base skiing accident at 39 years old, leaving a beautiful wife and a beautiful three-year-old daughter behind. One extremist friend of his, Pierre, said he was at the ragged edge of a ragged sport where you had to be 100% right every time. He was willing to risk everything just to have that fully alive, fully awake, real, authentic experience again, to fly. What do you risk everything for in your human life? Is there anything that matters that much to you, anyone? Is there anything that brings so much life to who you are that you would risk your life for it? I've been thinking a lot about the whole nature of risk-taking, and especially as it defines these extreme skier, base jumper sorts. And whether you're flying off a cliff or climbing one, or going up uh, frozen ice falls, or sledding up the face of some huge mountain, whether you're racing down on a snowboard or skis or in the giant slalom, just realizing that there is something innately good and deeply right about a human being's capacity and willingness to throw it out there and to take risk. God has made you for a fully alive life, and the means through which God calls you into and asks you, beckons you to take into that life is filled with risk. According to the Bible, story after story after story of these great saints that we read about that God looks down on and says, well done, good and faithful servants were people who had the guts to step out big time, even risk their very lives 